What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Islam Makachev and Max Holloway go back and forth. Heading into this weekend's BMF title fight between Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway, the former featherweight champ took a bit of a shot at lightweight champion Islam Makachev, indicating that he was unsure as to why Makachev didn't accept a fight with Justin Gaethje back in February. The comment seems to have sparked a back and forth between Holloway and the champ, with Makachev firing back on social media on Thursday writing, For the record, since 2021 I fought 7 times, while Holloway did 5 fights and Justin just 4. Do your homework before talking trash about your champ. Max Holloway then responded to the tweet, suggesting that the champ should look beyond the headlines, writing, Never said you weren't active. I simply said you should have took the February fight if you wanted to keep busy. Don't just read headlines, champ. Holloway and Makachev's comments also sparked a back and forth with Dustin Poirier amid talk of him and Makachev competing this summer. As Poirier wrote, See you soon. Islam Makachev then responded to Poirier's reply, predicting that the Diamond will go 0-3 in undisputed title fights if they face off, writing 0-3 with a winky emoji. In response, Poirier then posted a meme that amused the MMA community. With Poirier eager to get his crack at the champ along with the other four fighters competing at 155 pounds on Saturday's UFC 300 card, there's certainly no shortage of contenders for Islam Makachev. Next up, let's take a look at Aljamain Sterling reveals shocking plan. Aljamain Sterling may be taking his final preparations for his featherweight debut at UFC 300, however the former bantamweight champ still has his sights set on a rematch with Sugar Sean O'Malley. With O'Malley eyeing an eventual trip to featherweight, and Sterling confident that he can fast track his road to a featherweight title shot with a win over Calvin Cater, the former bantamweight champ believes that a rematch with O'Malley could still be possible at his new weight. Speaking to the media members during his UFC 300 media day appearance, he explained, you know, it's not like O'Malley's a bad fighter. He's, I think he's a really good fighter. I just think the timeline was very fitting for him, and I would like to get that one back, especially if I can win the belt at 145. He's talking about, uh, I want to go get the jet and go to Spain. Like, bro, worry about Marab first, and let me worry about Calvin. If I get through Calvin and I can win the belt again, I would love to get that one back in, on that skinny guy. With Alexander Volkanovsky planning to take time off before his rematch with Ilya Teporia, and Max Holloway potentially in a position to call for a lightweight fight with Islam Makhachev should he emerge victorious from UFC 300, it's unclear whether the UFC would in fact fast track Sterling to the title given that he's fighting number 8 ranked Calvin Cater. With Movsar Ivlov also on the cusp of a title shot, the UFC could look to book the two for a title eliminator rather than giving Sterling a title fight should he emerge victorious from UFC 300. Next up, let's take a look at Max Holloway wants to fight Ilya Teporia. Although Max Holloway has indicated that he believes a fight between he and Islam Makhachev could be a fun fight should he emerge victorious from his BMF title fight with Justin Gaethje, fans have continued to call for Holloway to drop back down to 145 for a fight with Ilya Teporia. As we approach UFC 300, the former featherweight kingpin knows that it's always a good thing when you have options. Speaking to media members during his UFC 300 media day, Holloway indicated that despite his previous comments about a fight with Islam Makhachev, he also has his sights on a fight with Ilya Teporia. Uh, the man keeps talking and I keep hearing, you know, so my only advice to that guy is like, uh, when the contract come up, sign the dotted line, don't make no excuses. Uh, questionable. I got everybody keep asking me, what do I think of Toporia? He's questionable. I, 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 I'll fight him. You go ask him that question. Ask him that question about me. At the end of the day, UFC, I always wanted to fight for the title. I always want to do this. A lot of contenders, they gave me they gave me a lot of up-and-coming contenders, and then there's one that didn't come up to, to, towards my way. So. As Holloway's manager Tim Simpson indicated while speaking with Ariel Helwani, the former featherweight champ really wants to fight Ilya Teporia, regardless of the location. He really wants to fight Teporia. Um, he feels like he's going to whoop him. That's Max's words. He's down with that? doing that this year. He'll do it anywhere. So he really wants to fight Teporia. With Teporia's first title defense expected to take place in Spain later this year, it seems to be only a matter of time before a date is finalized. Next, let's take a look at Sean Strickland reveals next UFC fight. Early this month, Paulo Costa indicated he was offered a fight with former middleweight champ Sean Strickland, which the former champ allegedly turned down. After a post from Costa on Instagram, however, Strickland clarified the situation. In the comments writing, I didn't say no, I said how much. Strickland then took to social media, asking fans how much they thought he was offered to fight Costa on seven weeks notice. Based on his interactions with a fan in the replies, he was offered less than $400,000. Strickland then posted a follow-up tweet, indicating that he met with the UFC and a bout between him and Paulo Costa is on, writing, Well, I had a meeting with the UFC and told them that I don't want to be rich. I want to be able to support a family after my career is done. They were actually pretty supportive. Made it happen. Thank you, fans. All right, Paulo Costa. You got your wish. Let's do some bleeding. In a separate post regarding fighter pay, he wrote, Here's the thing, guys. UFC isn't the NFL or the NBA. It's absolutely cutthroat. You don't leave this sport happy or well. If I fought Jake Paul, one, I'd murder him, but two, we would make millions. 
something you guys experience at your jobs. The pay gap just keeps getting wider. Costa then responded with a picture of him and Strickland in cowboy attire writing, let's go cowboy. According to Strickland's coach, Eric Nixick, he's a fan of the fight and likes Strickland's chances, as he explained on the MMA Hour. I'm hoping to go out and get You like that matchup for him? I do, I do. Man, Costa's a beast though. He is. This dude's a beast, man. I don't know if it's a five rounder or a three rounder. I haven't been told any yeah, of that yeah. stuff yet. I know it's a pay-per-view, so it should be a title fight. Five rounds is always great, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he can put dudes in deep waters, you know? Whereas I think for a three rounder, um, Costa's able to kind of go hard, fast, stay on that pace, you know? So it's, it'll be an interesting matchup for sure. With both fighters on board, it sounds like the ball is now in the UFC's court. Now let's shift gears and take a look at Hamzat Chimaev declined to fight at UFC 300. As Dana White previously indicated, Leon Edwards was offered three different opponents for UFC 300, all of which he accepted, and from the sounds of the follow-up reports, none of the fights offered included Bilal Muhammad. One of the fights Edwards reportedly accepted was about with undefeated contender Hamzat Chimaev, who had previously moved up to 185 pounds and defeated Kamaru Usman late last year. According to Edwards' manager, Tim Simpson, who spoke on the MMA Hour, this is the fifth time that Edwards has accepted a fight with Chimaev, and although the undefeated two-division contender didn't accept a UFC 300 fight because of Ramadan, he believes a fight between the two has to happen at some point. Well, as we were getting to eight to ten weeks out, um, they said, what about Hamzat Chimaev? And I'm, I, again, I don't want to open the curtain too much, but Hamzat has spoken about this publicly, yeah. so, so I'll, I'll, I'll use Hamzat as my source. That was what they were working on. For whatever reason, it, it couldn't come. He said it was Ramadan and, and weight and everything. I mean, they, they have to fight. Whether yeah. Leon goes up to 85 or yeah. whatever, they have to fight. I mean, th this was the fifth time he's agreed to fight it. Yeah, yeah. And I th I, you know, Leon very much favours his chances against him, right? So they have to fight at some stage. <laughs> so we, we loved it. As reporter Marcel Dorf wrote in response, basically offered Leon three guys, Hamza, Islam, and Chavkat, who already stated not being available to fight because of Ramadan. While the clear number one contender Bilal Muhammad stated he was available also during Ramadan, he never got offered the fight. What are we doing, UFC? Despite Edwards' manager indicating in the interview that he asked Hunter Campbell about a fight with Bilal Muhammad, the bout was never offered to the champ, leaving the streaking contender furious. He wrote on social media this week, Leon, his manager, his coach, his brother, all bitch. With the UFC headed to the UK this summer, it'll be interesting to see who they have the champ defend the title against. Next, let's take a look at Yuri Prohaska fires back at Alexander Rakic for comments. Yuri Prohaska has continued to show respect to the samurai way of life throughout his UFC career. In addition to his samurai-like hairstyle, Prohaska has also cited the Book of Five Rings by Japanese swordsman Mayamoto Musashi as having a strong influence on him. According to his UFC 300 opponent, Alexander Rakic, Prohaska is a fake samurai, and one simply doesn't walk the path of a samurai simply by reading a book. While speaking to the media during the UFC 300 media day, he explained, Yeah, I, I said he's a fake samurai because, uh, you know, you cannot be, you cannot become a samurai after just reading a book and live this spirit, you know. If you are a samurai, you need to live this for a long time and not for the last two, three years. So that's why I said he's a, a fake samurai. The comments naturally didn't sit well with the former light heavyweight champion, who fired back during his own UFC 300 Media Day appearance, indicating that although Rakic is speaking without knowing him personally, when the two meet in the octagon on Saturday, he will know exactly who he is. He's talking too much, like I said. He's talking too much, he don't know me, and he, he will, he will know me in the cage, who I am, where I am able to, to go, how through I can go to take a win. And uh, he don't know me personally. If you don't know somebody personally, how you can speak about him something, wh whatever. And I never said about myself, I'm, the, I'm a samurai or whatever. Yeah, because I'm respecting all the warriors from all the history. With the odds for the fight split down the middle, only time will tell how things play out in this potential light heavyweight title eliminator. Next, let's take a look at Dana White shuts down Conor McGregor rumor. Leading up to the UFC 300 Fight Week press conference on Thursday, reports indicated that the UFC could potentially announce a date for the long-awaited fight between Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. The rumor quickly gained traction as fans began to wonder if the long-awaited bout would finally be made official. Just hours before the press conference, Michael Chandler then took to social media, indicating that he had just landed in Las Vegas for the historic card, which fueled speculation that the bout would in fact be announced. 
When Thursday's press conference kicked off, Dana White quickly squashed the rumors, indicating that the fans shouldn't believe everything they hear online. Don't believe anything you read on the internet. Despite the news being a bit of a disappointment for fans, White did say that the first UFC heavyweight champion, Mark Coleman, who recently rescued his parents from a house fire, will wrap the BMF belt around the waist of the winner of the Gaethje Holloway fight. Dana also said that the performance bonuses would be bumped up from 50,000 for the historic card, which earned him some major applause from fans. Of course, many fans have also theorized that the UFC could just announce the McGregor vs. Chandler fight during the UFC 300 broadcast on Saturday. The MMA community roast the UFC for its new gloves. Today, the UFC presented new gloves which include new colors, gold for the championship fights, gunmetal for the regular bouts, blue for Dana White Contender Series, and red if you're an up-and-comer. It also has a better design for comfortability to the fighters, like better fitting to the wrists, some of the seams of the gloves are now hidden in better spots, and the finger holes are now angled so it doesn't irritate the fighters' fingers when their hands closed. But fans have pointed out that they still haven't fixed the eye poke problem, as you can still fully extend your fingers while wearing the gloves. Here's what the MMA community had to say. Nothing in there about minimizing eye pokes, lol. Can still commit eye pokes with them, therefore they're trash. New gloves look interesting. Significant effort seems to be put into the design that minimizes cuts and abrasions. Not seeing anything related to eye pokes? Gold gloves for title fights is a nice touch. LMFAO, no way UFC created a new glove design and didn't even address the massive problem with eye pokes when the glove already exists that make it harder for fingers to remain stretched out. They basically stole Trevor Whitman's idea after blocking his gloves from being used. No curve designed to help mitigate outstretched fingers, less padding overall means more possible damage to fighters' hands, which also translates to possibly even more finishes. Could possibly lead more fighters to engage in the grappling slash clinch fighting, but they'll sell more. So eye pokes is an interesting one, in as much as, um, you know, recently we've, we've seen a lot of eye pokes. There's about 36 eye pokes uh, on a yearly basis on average since 2019 in the UFC. Um, an eye poke happens about every 14 fights, um, and the average duration of a, of a stoppage for an eye poke is about 50 seconds. Uh, but that can be up to five minutes, as we well know, and about can be finished. So eye pokes are a, are a very interesting topic. When we've looked at the information, and again, leaning on our colleagues with, within UFC stats and 3027 that, that you know, record all this information for us, um, the, the information around eye pokes from series uh, one through six of the contender was significantly greater than series seven. So we actually saw a, a, a reduction in eye pokes in that seventh series when we were wearing the glove. Now, again, we hope that that is a consequence of the redesign and the nature of the glove, um, but we're all watching moving forward to ensure that this is going to be the case. Here are our top comments from yesterday's video. Bo Nickel's spot on this card is disgusting. The fighters who have a stronger record and more years in the promotion should get the spot. This just proves the community right in saying the UFC has become WWE. The Bo Nickel fight is the bathroom slash meal slash socializing break fight, especially since they have him fighting some unknown scrub. Honestly disrespectful to the event. Obviously Yuri number 2 versus Rakic number 5 deserves to be on the main more than Bo versus some other random can, but that's how the UFC works with their favorites. The bow fight being on the main card against a basically unknown will never make sense no matter if he becomes champ. If they wanted him on the main card, they should have gave him a tougher opponent.